Hi everyone, I'm Jen Lucas, Managing Editor of the Knitting Circle and Craftsy Contributor, and I want to welcome you to today's live event. Today we're going to be knitting, and we're going to be knitting what I think is a great back-to-school project, and it is the We've Got Spirit hat, and it's the perfect super quick project to knit um, for back to school and yes it's still august and many kids have already started school and at least where i live in the midwest it's still really hot out but before you know it it's going to be cool especially at night and this is the perfect project for when you're going to those football games or whatever activity your kids are in or your family members or friends are in it's a great way to show your school spirit. So we're going to talk about how to knit this hat from start to end. We'll be starting with the ribbing here, work this little cool slip stitch pattern decrease, and I'll talk about adding the pom-pom on at the end. So if you haven't done so already, you're going to want to make sure that you go ahead and download the pattern. Wherever you're watching this video, you'll find a link in the description to the pattern. So be sure to download that so you can follow along with me and then knit one for yourself or more than one for yourself. Um, in addition to that, you're going to see a chat box wherever you're watching. So just drop your questions and comments into the chat box uh, as we go along and I will answer as many of those as I can while uh, I am knitting the hat. So that's really it. So let's go ahead and get started. If you have found that chat box, be sure to say hello. Let us know where you're watching from. I also love to know, do you know how to knit? Or what do you like to knit? What are you currently knitting while you're watching? Just let us know what you're up to, where you're watching from, and let's go ahead and get started. So to begin, I'm going to talk about the materials that we're going to need for our project. So to start out, of course, we're going to need our yarn. And for this particular project, we're using a super bulky weight yarn. So it's a number six. It's super bulky. You can see, especially my green one here. It's a very thick yarn here. And so for this, we're going to need two different colors. You're going to need your main color and your contrasting color, or your color A, your color B, um, and the exact yardages that you're going to need for your particular um, hat size will be listed in the pattern. Um, for these hats here, this these two, I knit the teen size in the pattern and the head circumference measurements are also given in the um, pattern as well. So I know sometimes it's a little hard to say teen, adult small, adult medium, etc. because like everybody's head size is different. For example, my nieces that are now nine and 12, I've been knitting them quote adult size hats since they were very young because um, they just have bigger heads. So anyway, but this is the teen size. And um, I was able with um, one ball of each of these, I was able to make both hats and I had just barely any left over. So no, for the smaller sizes, you possibly could get two hats out of it. Um, but if you're working the bigger sizes, you might need two skeins even to finish one um, of each color. Um, but yes, the smaller sizes, you could probably get two hats out of it, which is really great. You just have to do it in the opposite colors then, but that's no big deal. So in addition to our yarn, we obviously need some knitting needles. So we're going to use two different size knitting needles here. And we have a US size 11 and then also a US size 13. In the pattern, I have listed circular needles and double pointed needles for working your project. However, I like to knit using magic loop. So I'm going to use the magic loop method of knitting here. But absolutely, if you want to go ahead and use the 16 inch circular and then switch to double points when the crown gets too small, you absolutely can do that too. So it's really up to you. But I'm going to use magic loop. So I just need a US size 11 and a US size 13. In addition to that, of course, it's just sort of the usual things that we're going to need. Your scissors, we're going to need a tapestry needle. I actually pulled out two here um, that have two different size eyes for the yarn to go through. Um, usually I like to use a metal one like this, but I'm pretty sure that the eye is not going to be big enough for my yarn. So then I also pulled out my plastic one with the larger eye for when we uh, go to weave in ends later. And you'll need a stitch marker to mark the beginning of your round if that's something you like to do. And then as an option, you can add a pom-pom if you like to the top. And in uh, for these patterns, I use the store-bought ones because I thought they're really cute. And they're still pretty trendy. Um, so I have linked 
in the pattern to this particular one that I found online, it came in a pack of 12, but I feel like as knitters and crocheters and crafters, crafters, we're always making things like hats. So it was pretty inexpensive to get a pack of 12. This particular one has an elastic loop on the bottom. But then I also had this one I actually found in my office today um, that's even larger. I think this one might be a five inch pom-pom. That other one was a four inch pom-pom. And this one has a snap. Um, so you can actually take this on and off and you would just sew this snap to your hat and then you could just snap your pom-pom on. So it's really up to you whatever kind of pom-pom you want to use. You might not want to have a pom-pom or you might want to make your own. So now that we have gone ahead and do that, let's go ahead and cast on. So I'm going to grab my main color here. I'm going to start with the green. And again, this is just really great for when you want to show some school spirit. My niece is a cheerleader and for her team, they're green and white and black. And so I decided to go with the green and white for, um, for the hat. So let's get my needles going here. And while I'm doing that, let's see, we've got Elizabeth from Everett, Washington. Hello, I'm glad you're here. And we have Chris from Missouri. Um, let's see, we also have uh, Monique from the East Coast and from Massachusetts. And um, I think that's everybody for now. Chris says hello from Missouri. Okay, great. So let's go ahead and get started. So we're gonna cast on, and you're gonna cast on the number of stitches that the uh, pattern tells you for your particular size. And I always like to start with the German twisted cast on. And the reason I like it is because it's stretchy and it looks good with ribbing in my opinion. So I start by estimating how long of a tail I'm gonna need. And so let me show you what I mean. So normally when I'm estimating a tail for the long tail cast on, I wrap the yarn around my needle 10 times and pull off a length of yarn and that equals 10 stitches. And that works pretty good. In general, my tail is the right length. With the German twisted cast on, we're using a little bit more yarn um, into the cast on, which is what makes it more stretchy. And so I like to wrap the yarn around the needle 15 times and then estimate that as 10 stitches. So let's go ahead and do that. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So I just pinch here and unravel and I say, okay, that's giving me about 10 stitches to cast on so I could fold it over. That's 20, 30, 40. I don't know that I'll cast on the 44 stitches total, but um there, that would be 50. So let's just start there. So we'll have more than enough tail now. You're just going to make a slip knot right at that point and stick it on your needle. And the slip knot counts as your first stitch. And then we're going to have our tail over our thumb and our working yarn, which is going to our ball over our index finger, just like this. And now, so it looks our hands are arranged just like the long tail cast on. And so when you do the long tail cast on, you go through the loop and around and pull through just like that. German twisted cast on has a couple little extra steps that add a little more yarn into it, which is why it's stretchy. So we're going to go under both strands on the thumb, then through the strand or the loop on the thumb, around on the index finger to pick up that yarn. And then here, it's a little hard to see, but there's an X here where the loop got crossed. You just need to bend your thumb to open that loop up and then pull your yarn tight to add your stitch. So again, under both strands, through the loop on your thumb, under the strand on your index finger, uncross the loop on your thumb, bring the needle back through the loop on your thumb and pull tight. If this is something that you haven't done before and I'm going a little fast for you right now, don't worry. Um, we have a video on the Knitting Circle website on how to do the German Twisted Cast On, so you can always go check that out. In addition to that, you'll be able to come back and re-watch this video at any time. So if you need a little refresher when you go to make your own hat, you'll be able to find it. So let's just do a few more here. I don't think I'm going to cast on 
on a full size hat here because that would be kind of boring for you to watch me just continuing to cast on. So let's just maybe do, hmm, let's do 20. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay. And 12. 13. 14. 15. 16. 17. 18. 19 and hopefully that's 20, right? Let's just double check here. 2, 5, 7, 10, 12, 15, 17, and 20. So obviously I have an extra long tail here because I was estimating for way more stitches. So I'm just going to trim that off so I don't accidentally start knitting with it. I don't know if you're like me, but I'm always accidentally knitting with my tail. So let's just throw that out of the way. Uh, let's see, before we start joining in the round, we have a few more people saying hello. Julie says hello from Indiana, and I'm interested in how to smoothly change colors. I'm also interested in the magic circle, which is confusing to me. We have Shannon from Eugene. Um, we have Debbie from Somerville, South Carolina, Michelle from Alabama. We have Marceline from uh, Kansas City, Missouri. We have all kinds of people saying hello. This is so great. I'm very excited. Um, let's see, we have, um, let's see, Laura says, hello from Mississippi. Been trying to get the pattern link. So, oh, right. So you just need to, yeah, follow that link. And if you, if it asks you for your email and you just put your email in, um, it will, then you'll just get the pattern and you won't start getting additional emails from the knitting circle. Um, but I think you are, um, I think you are going to have to put your email address in and let's see, not sure it's only me, the screen with Jen Hans seem to be dark. So, oh, let's see. Okay. Let me see if I could turn my light up just a hair. See if that might help a little bit. It might be a little bit better. Okay. So now that we have our 20 stitches, we're going to go ahead and join in the round for our magic loop. So I have 20, so we need to split in half. So we have 2, 5, 7, 10, because that's half of 20. And 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay. So we've got 10 and we've got 10. We have to slide it so that both of, or all of the stitches are up on the needles here. And we have our loop for our magic loop just hanging off to our side. Now we need to orient our needles such that the yarn is coming off the back needle or the one furthest from us and the other stitches are just on the front half. So the front half just has stitches, the back half has the tail that goes to our ball of yarn. So to do the magic loop, and we have videos on this too, both on Craftsy and on the Knitting Circle, we're going to take that back needle and pull it out. You don't want to pull too much. You don't want to pull this loop all the way so that there's no loop there. You want to leave the loop on that side. And then I like to always, because I'm starting with a knit, I come under the working yarn. And then I like to always insert my needle into this first stitch. And it could be a little tight, but that's okay. And now we're ready to start knitting. So I'm just making sure that my cast on is all going the same way. Just like knitting in the round, like any project, you can um, twist. If you twist your cast on, um, you're going to have a twist in your knitting. So it's just like any knitting in the round. You want to check to make sure that everything's going in the right direction. And from there, you just start working your pattern. So I always, when I'm working, and really when I'm working in the round, but Magic Loop also, um, I like to, when I go into the second stitch, I don't really, you never want to really crank down on your stitches, right? But I do tighten a little bit by pulling on this yarn as I'm working those first and second stitches. And so now we are working in the round and we're working the ribbing and it's knit two, purl two. So I did my knit two, my purl two, and then my knit two. Let's see. Oh, Belle says it's a little better. So that's great. I am going to just keep my hands up a little bit higher because that's closer to the light. So that seems to be helping everybody. So that's great. Yeah, more people saying hello. So you're just switching between your knits and your purls. 
And depending on the number of stitches that you have cast on, you might have to start your um, one side of your magic loop with pearls and that's okay. You can see here, usually my first round, I end up having it a little bit tight just because I do tend to crank down like on that slip knot, um, but we're gonna make it work. So now I'm starting side with a pearl. And again, that's just how I've arranged the stitches. So I happen to be starting with a pearl on this half to continue that knit to pearl to rib ribbing. And so I'm just knitting two stitches, bringing the yarn to the front, purling two, knitting two. and purling too. There we go. Okay, so that finishes round one, and then you'll just work the ribbing for the number of times indicated in the pattern. So let's just go ahead and do one more round. At this point, usually what I do is I work one round and then I place my stitch marker to mark the round. That's kind of just my personal preference. And I just put it into the actual fabric when I'm doing magic loop. So I just leave it right there and know that this is the start of my round. You can also use your tail too, if you're too lazy to go get a stitch marker. Um, but sometimes it's a little hard, um, depending on your project to use your tail, I think, as uh, as keeping track of your round. So just the stitch marker right in there is great. So now we're gonna start the next round. So let's do this again. And then I'll make sure that we're talking about how we are pulling these loops through as we are, um, as we are knitting, how, how we're pulling the cord through to make the magic loop. So you can see my cord's clear, so it's probably kind of hard to see. But magic loop, you have two loops. You have a half, half of the cord basically for your knitting on one side and half on the other. So when we get to the end of this half, we're going to pull on our needles to get our loops on both sides. So I, what I like to do, and this is something you might need to play around with a little bit and find sort of the rhythm that works for you. Like a lot of things in knitting, it just kind, kind of comes down to personal preference, right? And what works for you and what feels right and comfortable in your hands. So I flipped it over and now I like to pull on the cord. And then once my needle is up to my stitches, I kind of, I have a tendency to kind of roll it just because if my stitches are tight, that will help get my needle in there. So now I have my big loop over here on the left and then I could pull that back needle out until I have a loop and bring it around and then just start knitting. And here we're gonna do purl. So I've brought the yarn to the front to purl. And so as you're working the ribbing, just make sure that you're bringing the yarn in between the needles. to switch between knit and purl. So now we're gonna purl, so we're gonna bring it to the front. Don't actually accidentally bring it over the needle because if you bring it over the needle like this accidentally, you are creating a yarn over and you're gonna have an extra stitch that you're gonna have to figure out how to deal with later. So you would just keep continuing to work the ribbing for the specified number of rounds in the pattern. And from there, we are going to go ahead and start working um, the actual hat pattern. And so at this point, let me just grab my next little sample here. After you've worked all the rounds of your knitting, you'll have something that looks like this. And so this is the hat size that has 44 stitches. Um, and so I have the full 44 stitches on the needle here. And so the next step is now we're going to switch to that larger needle and knit one round. So this is my size 11 needle here. And so I just need to grab my size 13, which is over here. And when we're switching to a larger needle, all we have to do is um, start knitting with the new needle. It's as simple as that. So I tend to pull this back needle just so all of my stitches are hanging on the cord here. I flipped it so we're ready to start the next round. And this is just all knit stitches here as indicated in the pattern. and we're just knitting. So the needle in my left hand is my size 11 and the needle in my right hand is the size 13. 
And so what this is doing is it allows the ribbing to um, cinch in a little bit more. So it's a little bit tighter, a it fits a little bit better. And then um, we just have that looser gauge for the rest of the hat. Um, but it's one of those things, if you forget to switch, that's okay. The gauge that's listed in the pattern is based on the large size needle. Um, and one thing I didn't talk about at the beginning is gauge. Um, when knitting a hat, gauge is kind of important um, because you need the hat to fit a particular head. Now, if, of course, if you're just knitting for um, charity projects or whatever, you know, maybe then gauge becomes a little less important because, you know, typically you can always find somebody's head that a hat is going to fit. But if you are making this hat for a specific person, you're going to want to make sure that you get the gauge listed in the pattern so that your hat fits the head of the person you want it to fit. Okay, so we finished one half here. And so I've switched to the size 13 needle. I'm gonna flip it over. And you can see this is a little bit fiddly at this particular point, but then we're gonna get the size 11 needle out of the way. And from there, it should be easy because we'll only be de dealing with the one needle for the rest of the time. So I just pulled the loop out here on my size 13 needle. So it's just like we're still doing that magic loop. And again, we have lots of video content on how to do magic loop. So if it's something you're interested in, um, we even have a whole class on um, you knitting socks using magic loop. Um, and it's both on Craftsy and the Knitting Circle. And um, even though that's socks, which are super fun to knit, um, you know, the magic loop method applies to, to everything. Um, I use it for just about everything, hats, socks, uh, sweater sleeves most of the time. So it's a very useful technique to know. Um, and I like it for hats because I don't have to worry about switching to um, smaller smaller needles or double pointed needles, I should say, um, when I'm doing the crown decreases. Okay, so we are free of our size 11 needle here. So that's great. So let's see what we have. So we have our ribbing and then we've just done one round of stockinette stitch. So from here, we are ready to start our actual hat, our slip stitch pattern, I should say. So with the slip stitch pattern, what's nice is we're only using one color at a time. And so um, you're either just knitting or slipping the stitches in this case. And actually for this pattern, it's very easy because a lot of the rounds are still just plain knitting. It's just whether you're going to use color A, which is my main color, or color B, which is my uh, contrasting color. So when I'm going to be knitting with a second color, I've stuck my tail inside. And I like to leave a pretty long tail in case I get any kind of hole or anything I don't like here at the join. That's usually not a problem, but I do like to leave a little bit of a longer tail just so I have it if I need it. And now we're just gonna push our stitches up, get organized here. And all I'm gonna do is drop my green yarn, my main color, and then pick up my white yarn, which is my contrasting color. And so for this particular pattern, the first two rounds are knit all the stitches. So that's really easy. So we are going to just knit all the way around with our color B here. I find that this particular yarn that I'm using, which is an acrylic yarn, can be um, a little bit splitty. Um, and I find that common with a lot of super bulky yarns. Um, even right here, you can see it's just kind of it's just kind of splitty here. So you just want to take your time and make sure if you're splitting the plies that you're just taking your time to fix them as you go. And this is, like I said, really great because whatever your school uh, colors are, you can make your hat in those colors. Um, if it's a professional sports team that you just really like, this would be a great project for that too. Um, you know, if there's certain fandoms um, as far as um, books or movies or something, you know, you can 
you can really make this in any color you want. And I've done it here in the two colors, um, but you could get really creative with this. And if you wanted to experiment with multiple colors, you definitely could do that. Might be a fun little, fun little project. Okay, so we're coming to the end of our round one, and then we're just going to knit our round two of the pattern, which is just knitting all the stitches again. And so you'll notice that this stitch here is a little bit loose, and that's just because that's the yarn that we left hanging right here. But don't worry about it because we'll be able to tighten that up as we go. So now I've knit it and I can just even pull on the tail a little bit there and keep on going. And then again, this same thing, this first stitch is a little loose, but that's because that's our stitch that um, is attached to the yarn tail or is the yarn tail. And so after we knit a couple stitches, we can just take a little pause and just give that a little bit of a pull. And again, when we go to weave in the ends, we can tug on those tails a little bit again if we need to in order to um, have our stitches be nice and tight. So we're finishing our round two of the um, slip stitch pattern. Again, it's just knitting. So this hat is really great if you're new to slip stitch knitting because a lot of these rounds are just knitting and then you just have a couple of rounds where you actually have to be doing some slipping, which will be happening on the next round. That's where that's where the excitement starts to happen. And the magic happens where we start getting that really nice pattern. Let's see, we have Laura saying, oh, thanks. She loves the uh, notes page at the end. Yes, all of our patterns always have just a note page at the end, which is just basically a lined sheet of paper, which is really great um, where you can write down information about, um, you know, maybe the yarn specifics. If you change needle sizes, if you change the pattern at all or whatever you want, you can, who the pattern, who the hat's for, you can write down anything you want in that section. That's really nice. I do like that too. I use it all the time because I, I do, uh, you know, I design a lot of the knit patterns, but um, I, well, and I, some crochet, but I love to crochet some of the patterns we have. And so I love having that notes page when I'm crocheting, um, crocheting our patterns. So that's great. I'm glad you like that. Okay. So now we finished rounds one and two. And so we're ready to start round three with color B. Nope, that was a lie. We're going to start with color A. So we just did our two rounds with color B. Now we're going back to color A. So when I'm switching colors, I like to bring the color I'm about to work with under the color I just used and up. Just it helps keep it a little bit neater along here. And now we did have a, um, a comment earlier, um, which now I've scrolled past it, so I don't know where it is, um, about um, working in the round and joining neatly. Now, in a pattern like this, where I am doing slip stitches, I don't really worry too much about my join right here because with the slip stitches, everything pretty much flows and looks nice. But if you don't like how this looks, I suggest you check out um, our video on a jogless join. Um, and we have some articles, I think, on Craftsy too about it, on how you can join this up without having, um, so that you have a more of a continuous looking um, line. But with slip stitches, I don't usually have to worry about that. Okay, so our color A, we're going to do slip one with yarn in front and then knit one. So we're going to put our yarn in front. So it's W-Y-I-F with yarn in front with yarn in front, slip one, and that's slip one purl wise, which it says in the pattern. But um, in general, the, the knitting rule is you always slip your stitch purl wise unless you're told otherwise. But I usually explicitly state it by patterns just so it's clear. But we're gonna slip one purl wise with yarn in front and then knit one. And we're gonna do that all the way around. So we're gonna bring the yarn to the front, slip, bring to the yarn, bring the yarn to the back, knit. So it's just slip and knit all the way around. 
And so this is the round that can be a little bit slower, and that's okay. It doesn't all have to be fast, just knit, 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 right? So just like when you're knitting and purling, you want to make sure you're always bringing that yarn in between the needles there, just like that, to slip and then knit. And this is the round if I'm watching TV that I'm actually uh, might pause the TV to pay attention to because the one mistake that I make most often when doing this kind of stitch pattern is when I bring the yarn to the front, I accidentally purl instead of slipping. So see how I just purled there? And that's an obvious mistake. So because I have my bar going across from where I slipped with the yarn in front and then here I actually purled the stitch. So that's the most common mistake that I tend to make when I'm doing this. So you just want to watch out for that one. I'm just going to keep doing our slip and our knit. And then we're going to flip it over, pull the cord, push our needle on into the stitches, pull that back needle out. So we have a loop on both sides. We're ready to do this other half. So again, we're gonna bring the yarn to the front to slip one with yarn in front, knit one. So now I'm just working the second half of the stitches. Oh, I almost purled there, <laughs> I was slipping. Um, we're just working the second half of the stitches from round number three. And we're gonna just keep going here. What's really great about this pattern is because we're using this super bulky yarn with the really large needles, um, this project is fast. Um, I consider myself a pretty quick knitter um, and I knit the entire hat start to finish, including putting the pom-pom on in two hours. Um, so I feel like if you're a really fast knitter, you could obviously get it done faster than that. Um, so I went somewhere between like, nine minutes to maybe four hours total of knitting it would take you and again it just depends on your speed of your knitting um but it is a really quick pattern this is one of those where if you have uh something to do the next day and you need to give a gift um you have the potential to do this in one day it's definitely there okay so we finished round three so i'm going to flip it over again and round four is just with color b so that's our white we are going to knit all the stitches. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do that just so you can see it. Um, and then we'll move on to the next step. So again, let's just get our yarn, it gets a little twisted. Normally when I'm, you know, when I'm knitting, um, you know, I guess not on camera at my desk, normally I keep one color sort of on one side of me and one color on the other to help keep it a little more organized. So you might find that that helps you too. So we're going to, bring our white, which is our color A, under. I'll just rearrange these here so we don't have any twists. There we go. And then round four is knit all the stitches. And so I'm not gonna knit all this entire round, but I am gonna do a few stitches so you could start to see what we've got going on here. Okay. So that is the first four row, rounds, I should say. It's not rows, it's rounds. Um, and let me bring in my finished hat here. So it's this stripe here. So you would just keep following the pattern as it's written. Um, and so basically we're gonna be doing a total of 12 rows. So we've I showed you how to do rows, rounds, <laughs> one through four, and then five through um, eight, are the exact same thing, it's just we're reversing the color. So you're gonna do two rounds with your color A, you're gonna do your color B, you're gonna do the slip stitch knit, or slip a stitch, knit one, and then another round of knitting. And then we go back to the original rounds one through four. So this is somewhere where if you want extra length to your hat, you can add extra rounds here. But keep in mind, let's see how long every four rounds is. That would probably be good information to know. So it's give or take an inch. That's probably hard to see. I can see it. It's give or take about an inch every four rounds. Um, so 
just know if you want to keep going with the slip stitch pattern, you absolutely can, but each one's going to add about an inch on to the end. Um, after we finish our uh, slip stitch pattern, then you are just going to be knitting the number of rounds that is listed in the pattern. And depending on the size, it will depend how many rounds you knit here before we start the crown decreases here, which I'm going to do now. So for the crown decreases, um, you're going to want to read your pattern extra careful because I really wanted, I really wanted to have almost this squared off. Of course, it's really hard to see with the palm, but I really wanted these sort of squared off decreases here. And so there had to be some setup rounds for some of the sizes in order to achieve that. So when you get to the crown decreases, just make sure that you're reading your pattern carefully and you can even highlight or circle exactly your size just to make sure you're keeping track and you're working the correct rounds. So I have a uh, hat here where I've started some of the decreases. And so here you go. This one has 44 stitches. It's the adult medium size. So for this particular um, hat that I'm working on here, I did not have to work any of the setup rows. If you need to do any of the setup rounds, all it involves is doing a knit two together. And I'll just show you how to do that quickly here and then I'll take it out. So if you don't know how to do a knit two together, you're just gonna go into the next two stitches from left to right, just like that. So again, I have two stitches from left to right, just like that, and then just knit them like you normally would. So that's all that's happening on those setup rounds if you're making a size where you need to do that. But let's continue with the decreases. I've already worked a few rounds here. So you would just follow the pattern. And so I left off on round five. So that's knit two, one, two, CDD, central double decrease. We're gonna slip two stitches as if we knit them together. So we're going into the next two stitches here from left to right and slipping them off, knitting the next stitch, and then passing the two slip stitches over the knit one. And what happens is all of the stitches fall right on top of each other there. And it just makes this nice little line in your knitting. And I really, really like it for things like hats. I just think it's a nice way to finish it off. And then knit two. So we're repeating that all the way around for this size. Knit two, central double decrease. Slip two as if to knit two together. Knit one. Pass the two slip stitches over the knit one. And then knit two. That takes care of this side and need a little more yarn here. Let's work the other half. Oh, Laura says yes, that she really likes that squared off look too. Yes. Um, the first time I ever saw hat decreases worked that way was um, in the turn a square pattern by Jared Flood. It was out years and years ago and I'm pretty sure it was a free pattern. Not hundred percent sure on that. Um, but um, that's where I first saw those kinds of um, decreases in a hat, and I loved it. And so I don't use it on everything. Um, sometimes I still just use your regular old knit two together decreases, but um, it is a really nice way to finish off a hat, especially when you have just a plain it's stockinette up here. Um, we don't have anything else going on. I think that that those defined lines look really nice. Okay, so we're continuing here with our CDD and knit two. So that takes care of round number five. So now let's do round number six. We're just gonna work these last couple rounds here and finish it off and stick a pom-pom on. Okay, so for now at this point, we're in our pattern where we're decreasing every single round. So we had done our knit two, central double decrease. Round six, it's knit one and then central double decrease. So knit one and then central double decrease. But there's one thing I want you to take a look at, and I know my yarn's dark, so it's kind of hard to see. But when you're working these central double decreases here, we have our line here, and obviously depending on your color of yarn, it will be easier to see or not. But when you're doing your central double decrease, one way you can read your knitting is 
we've come to the point where we're going to do a central double decrease. We can see our line of decreases here. That needs to be the center or second stitch of your central double decrease. So I have my knit one kind of hanging out loosely over here at the moment. Now we're going to do our central double decrease. So as I'm working my decreases, I can always be checking that I'm not messing things up because my central double decrease is going to take three stitches and turn it into one. And so you want that middle stitch of those three stitches to be having that line of decreases coming down it. Again, it's very subtle. But when you have your knitting right in front of your face, you can, um, you can definitely see that it's there. So again, we've knit one. I'm going to do that central double decrease. Central double decrease is one of my absolute favorite decreases to use. Um, I love it because of the way the stitches just fall behind that one main stitch. And so it does just make that nice line. So we're just going to continue working round six. And oh, it looks like we have a little yarn split or something going on here. So let's just take this out and just make sure that everything's looking okay. There we go. Okay, so we're going to slip two as if to knit two together, knit one, pass the slip stitch over, and knit one. And then coming around to the other side of our hat. We're just going to continue that round six. Knit one, slip two, knit one, pass the two over. You might see this in some patterns called an S2KP for slip two, knit one, pass over. But I like CDD because I, I think S2KP is too close to SK2P, which is a different kind of decrease. So I like to use central double decrease CDD as my abbreviation for this one. But And that's what I've used in this pattern. Okay, that's your central double decrease fact for you today. So now that that is done, we're ready to work our final round for this size. Again, the pattern's going to tell you exactly um, how many rounds and what you need to do on each round for each size. But for the size I'm working, we are ready to work round seven, which is the final round, which we are just doing central double decreases all the way around. So we have four stitches left. So I'm just going to slip the two as if to knit two together, knit one, pass over. And we're just going to do that all the way around. So slip, knit, pass over. So we have two stitches left over here. I'm going to come to the other side and do the same thing. One thing I wanted to mention is that I left my stitch marker down here just attached in the fabric and that's good enough for me. But just keep in mind, it just depends on you, your brain, how you like to work. You might find that you want to take this stitch marker out. Actually, let's just take it out right now. You might find as you're working, you might want to move it up your fabric some just so you can see it more easily. That's again, like many things in knitting, it's a personal preference thing. So I usually just, I'm lazy. So I usually leave mine down at the bottom, but you do what you like. We're just going to finish off these central double decreases on this last round for this size. And slip, knit and pass those two slip stitches over. So at this point, we have four stitches. We've got two on the cord here and two here. So we're done with our hat, which is great. And so I'm going to cut the yarn and I am going to leave um, a long enough tail about eight inches, but I'm not getting my tape measure out or anything to, to measure that eight inches, just eyeballing it's fine. But we want a tail that's long enough because we're gonna have to bring that tail through our stitches. So like I said at the beginning, we have two, I had two needles here, two tapestry or yarn needles, and they have two very different sized eyes. So let's, I doubt that we're going to be able to get it onto the smaller one, but let's see. So I fold the yarn over and I pinch it and then I stick it through. Oh, I did get that through. I'm actually kind of surprised. <laughs> 
but it's kind of tight. You might end up splitting the plies on that as you're trying to um, stick your yarn in. So just be aware, you you may have to get, I don't use this one a lot because I don't knit with a lot of bulky yarn, um, but you might have to get out that yarn needle or tapestry needle with the larger eye. This one's much easier to get the yarn through. So just be aware that you just don't want to use one of your needles that you would use on a lace project probably. Um, and so now, we have our tail coming off our stitch here. So I flipped my needles around just like I'm doing magic loops. So my uh, tail or yarn is coming off the back. And now I have my yarn on the tapestry needle. So I'm just going to slip the tapestry needle through the stitch purl wise. And then once I do that, I can take that stitch off. And you could kind of do that all in one motion if you like. Let's see. Monica says, such a cute hat. Thank you for teaching us. You've done stitches I haven't tried before. Thank you for showing us and giving us helpful hints. Well, thank you, Monica. I'm glad that that is helpful. So here I'm coming around just to the other side. And at this point now, we've caught all those last four stitches there that were loose. And this is just like finishing up any other hat. We're just going to pull it tight, just like that. We've closed our hat up. And so... At this point, I tend to go under the, the two stitches here like this. And I don't know why. That's just what I always do. Um, I just like to make sure that it's really tight there and then it's not going to loosen up. And of course, when I weave in the end, that's going to secure it too. But I usually just kind of do one pass under one leg of each stitch over here where, where the start and end of the round are. And then at that point, you can just stick your tapestry needle right into your knitting. So ideally you want to go right down through the center just so you don't have a random um, little strand of yarn um, hanging out there. So there we go. Let's pull that tight. Okay, there. So now we're going to flip this inside out and we have a few things to deal with here. We're going to weave in some ends. So I'll weave in, um, I'm not I probably won't weave in all these ends for you here just because, you know, that's kind of boring. Um, but <laughs> to weave in my end, um, when I'm weaving in ends, especially on super bulky yarn, I have a tendency to split the ply of yarn just so it's not, it doesn't, I don't know, it doesn't seem quite as bulky when you do that to me. But again, however you normally weave in your ends is just fine. So I'm just going to come down over here. And back up. And so you weave in your ends, however, for however much, however long you like, whatever feels comfortable to you. And then we can go ahead and trim. And we do have a couple minutes. So let's talk about weaving the in the ends here. So where we have, we have our white ends here. And um, when I'm weaving in ends on a project like this where I have two colors, I do my best. Oops, split the yarn there. Yeah, you can see how, how like the plies do kind of want to come apart here. See? So you just want to be careful that you're grabbing all of them when you're loading this onto your yarn needle. Um, but when I'm working with two colors like this, so I'm going to, as I'm weaving in, I'm going to try to do my best to keep my weaving on the same color stitches. So I'm gonna to try to just go through the white ones. And again, with the super bulky yarn, I am splitting the plies as I'm weaving in my ends. But again, that's a personal preference thing. Try it if you haven't tried it before, but if you don't like it, well, then you don't have to, um, you don't have to do it that way. Okay, so there we go. All right. And you would just do the same with this one. And then let's talk about, since we do have some time, we have, um, let's do this one at the bottom because this is one I like to talk about. So again, I'm just, I'm loading this just onto my tapestry needle. Okay, so let me flip this right side out for a second. So when you are knitting, in the round, right? You're making a spiral. So the start of your round is here and then the end of your round is here. And it's actually weirdly not that noticeable with this particular project, but you get a stair step here a lot of times. 
and I mean, we do have it here because we were we were knitting in the round. This is not, you know, the most attractive thing. And there's some things you could do when you're starting to eliminate this a little bit. Um, but you can also fix it at the end here. So let me load this back on to my yarn needle. So for when I'm trying to get rid of the stair step, what I'm going to do, and I start with my hat right side out, is that I have my tail here. I'm going to come over here. Here's my slip knot here. And then you have these strands from where your cast on are. I'm just going to go under the strand over here. And then I'm pulling this. And then I'm coming back over here to the last stitch and going under the strands and pulling this. And now you can see it's pretty flat. Now you do have to be careful that you don't pull too tight because if you pull too tight, your knits, your knit two and your knit two here come together and you kind of squish the purl two. So you just want to keep this a little bit loose so that you've bridged that gap where there's the stair step, but you don't pull so tight that you pull your knit stitches together. And then once I do that, I just flip it inside out. And when I'm weaving in ends for um, ribbing, I have a tendency, let's bring that to the wrong side. I have a tendency to just work my yarn right up a column of the stitches. And once again, in this case, I am splitting the plies. And there you go. So you would just, there's one more end I'll have to weave in on this later, but that's the weaving in the ends part. But I do think it's important to talk about it because it's, you know, something we, I don't know, we don't think about that much, but you, you always got to weave in your ends on your project. So, <laughs> okay. So at this point now we are ready to add the pom-pom if we want to. And you know what? I think I want to. And so I'm going to add um, one of these, which is linked in the pattern. Um, which has the elastic loop on it. And so there's some different ways that you can add these on, um, but I'm going to show you the way I um, add them on. And one thing you want to keep in mind is that when these came to me on from uh, off of the internet, um, they were all very smushed in the bag. And so when I took them out to use, um, I just took my hair dryer and just gave it a little and just uh, fluffed it up a bit. Um, but this is most likely acrylic. So you're gonna wanna be careful that you don't touch your hair dryer to your pom-pom because you might melt it. Um, so just be careful of that. But just, you know, on low, I just kind of gave it one of these with the hair dryer and just was able to fluff it up a bit because sometimes one side's a little flatter than the other, but over time, it looks just fine. Okay, so we're gonna need a strand of yarn here. And so you're gonna wanna use whatever color you used for the main part of your hat, which in my case is the green. And I'm just cutting a length of yarn. Again, it probably just needs to be eight to 10 minutes or eight to 10 minutes. It just needs to be eight to 10 inches, um, just long enough that you'll have um, something to weave in later. And so we're gonna get that tapestry needle again here. Okay, so to do this, we can go inside of our hat, and we're going to bring up our tail or our yarn really right up the middle. I'm going to go through, through the elastic loop and then back down into my hat again in a different spot. <laughs> Making sure that I'm not grabbing any other part. I can feel on the inside it split the ply. There we go. Okay, let's give that a pull. I might have just pulled it all the way through. Let's see. Oh no, look, I barely, barely hanging on there. We got it. Okay. So now I have my yarn going through that loop. And I have my two ends here. And so I know that a lot of people don't like to put knots in their knitting. This is one, this is a case where, and I, let me be clear. I don't care if you put knots in your knitting. It's your knitting. You do what you want. Um, I put knots in my knitting, but in this case, I did put a knot in my knitting. So I just overhand knot this down. And at that point, 
I could just take my yarn needle and weave in my ends the same way that I had already been weaving them in. So and at that point, you would be totally done and your hat would be done and it would be so cute. So there we go. So let's see, we had a few last comments here. Let's see. Um, Alora says, ditto Monica in my area. It's been a failed hunt to find anyone to teach me to knit or crochet, specifically knitting. This website and these videos are a treasure. I'm so glad that you found us. Um, and if you, for anybody out there who's watching and does need a refresher on learning to knit or learning to crochet, we do have a few things that um, could help you. So on Craftsy, we have startup libraries for knit and crochet. So you can check those out and those will give you all of um, the information you need um, to get started with knitting and crocheting, obviously. And then on Creative Crochet Corner, which is our crochet site, and on the Knitting Circle, which is our knitting site, both of them have a 14-day series, and it's either learn to crochet or learn to knit, and you would learn all the basics there as well. Um, and so those are available for you. If you know, if you're watching this today and you're watching on Craftsy and you don't know how to knit or crochet or any of the other crafts, um, we do have resources out there for you so that you can learn how to do those things. And really, this project is a pretty beginner beginner friendly project. The trickiest part is probably not even the slip stitches. It's probably the decreases at the end. But again, you, you can always come back and watch this video at any time. So if you need a refresher on that, that's no you can just come back to the um, Let's see what else. Um, Monique says, I've not done Magic Loop in some time. This has motivated me to pick it up again. Um, and the video that we have on um, Magic Loop is very helpful. Thank, thank you for this hat demo. Um, let's see. Uh, Maria says, thank you for this wonderful video and the way you explained to us. Oh, you're welcome. I'm so glad. I love doing these videos because even though I'm at home right now, I could still show you um, how to knit all these fun projects. Um, and let's see then. Debbie asks, oh, I would love to make a stocking for my grandson looking for one in the round. Is there a pattern here? As far as I am aware, I am not sure if there's one on Craftsy. On the Knitting Circle we might have one pattern in the shop right now, um, but sneak peek, um, I might have just received yarn in the mail um, for future projects um, that might involve a stocking. So stay tuned. <laughs> um, and Debbie also says, this was wonderful. I've never knit in the round, but you made it so easy to follow. Well, I'm so glad that everybody enjoyed watching this video and learning how to knit the We've Got Spirit hat. Um, if you do decide to make one, absolutely let us know. Um, you can always tag us on social media. We're on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Um, so you can reach out to us there. Um, on the Knitting Circle website, we also have a project gallery page, which is really cool. And you can go and upload any project you want, not just this one that you've done today. Um, but it's a great place to go to get inspiration on different projects um, and share what you're working on with other people too. So I encourage you to go check that out as well. So thank you so much, everybody, for joining me today. I hope that you had a great time learning to make this hat. And I can't wait to see all your uh, hats out there during football season or whatever sport or activity you might enjoy. So that's it for me for today. I'm Jen Lucas, Managing Editor of The Knitting Circle, and I'll see you next time. Happy knitting!